a 67 year old male with a metaphysical virus. Let us see the genesis of this debate. Exactly why does this debate come into picture? TKR was not a very complex surgery. Patient comes with a very bad deformity like this. All you have to do is put the implant aligned at 90 degree to the mechanical axis, get the knee straight. The patient's deformity is gone, patient's pain is gone, patient's instability is gone, patient walking very well. And this was probably one of the surgery which was predictable outcome and people used to be happy to be called as a knee replacement surgeon. But in the last few years we realized that about 20% patients after the TKR are not very happy. So what is the cause of these unhappy uh, patients? And some of the guys, some more brilliant people uh, in our group got a brilliant idea that we have a normal alignment which is not necessarily straight. If you can go by this paper, only 11% people in a natural alignment is properly straight people, uh, pro properly straight knees, while 89% people have either a varus or a valgus. So the idea was why not put the knee replacement in a native alignment so the patient will always get the knee which he had before even after the surgery and patient is happier. Well, brilliant idea and to propose this idea and to make it more practical, they develop the concept, this esoteric concept of three kinematic axes. Now what are the three kinematic axes? It's the axis along which the patella moves, another axis along which the tibia moves and the third axis vertical along which the tibia rotates. Now why I call them esoteric? Because these are the axes which you have to have a CT scan and a special software to identify. If you give a bone to a patient who uh, to a surgeon doing kinematic alignment and ask him sir i don't understand these axes can you point out on this particular bone where is my kinematic three axes and believe me they won't be able to identify these axes to you on an actual bone because these are all not related to a bony landmark we need a 3d ct and a special software to understand how the patella is going to move and which would be the axis so many times when a surgeon wants to use a kinematic axis and try to put the knee according to the kinematic uh, concept, they would do some jugglery, some jugard. And there are many papers which have come up where they do some fixed cut from the distal part, fixed cut from the posterior part and try to put the femur as they think would be what the patient probably would have before the arthritis process began. Now imagine so many presumptions which are made by the surgeon during this. And that is why when this paper was published, uh, this is our own Dr. Heman Pandit from Oxford University, he's a professor there, and he analyzed all the paper presented in the last 10 to 15 years on a kinematic alignment, that is K, and they found out that many studies on K have actually described non-K technique. They have done something which doesn't correspond to K because they have not used a three-dimensional cross-sectional imaging, but they base their study only on 2D pictures that are CTs, uh, 2D pictures or a simple CT scan. So many of the report or literature which will be presented by my opponent, believe me that they are called a pseudo K study. So they do not really mean that the outcome refers to the kinematic alignment. So what is this kinematic alignment? This patient has a virus, a uh, constitutional virus, and you want to do TKR in him, and you can get a distal cut parallel to the distal joint line, posterior cut parallel to the posterior joint line, take a tibia along its own alignment. So when you do TKR, the knee still look a little bored and bent and a patient is happy, wow, my knee is same even after surgery. But problem comes in a patient where you have got x-rays like this which was shown to us. It is difficult to justify and know exactly where is going to be your normal native femoral bone. Is it here or is it here? Or upper tibial end, is it here or is it here? So when you try to get some idea according to your mind that okay, this is where I'm going to put my implant and then you get a knee which is still look bad and deformed. There is another brilliant idea beyond this that what you do is you take extra tibial valgus cut and then what happens is this deformed knee now start looking uh, more or less straight and you get a vertical axis closer to the mechanical axis. So what you have done is you have done two mistakes. You have done femur in the wrong way and then corrected that by doing a tibia and extra valgus. So it's very brilliant and that's why I say it is an esoteric thing. I hope you understood what kinematic alignment means. Well, I haven't. So if you go back now to the original question of 20% unhappy patient, a lot of literature has been describing these patients, why they are unhappy. And they found that the main reason for these unhappiness is malalignment, 
mal sizing of the component, mal balancing by surgeon under over release, mal positioning, mal rotation of patella, enteric compartment overstuffing, poor soft tissue healing, arthrofibrosis, RSD, stiffness, infection, implant loosening, etc. Tell me, can you and this article which titled as looks good but feels bad about the same people, x-ray is good, people are unhappy, they found that obesity, female diabetes, pulmonary problem, disability compensation and over expectation. These are reasons. Now, do you really think that a few degree change by using some esoteric excesses is a going to be game changer in these unhappy patients? I beg to differ with that. So in these patients, when you have a deformity like this, I think you need to have a proper mechanical alignment where you can get a proper cut, get the knee straight and get the patient a stable straight knee and don't go for these esoteric access. Thank you very much.